Okay. Are you guys arguing? Are we having trouble in paradise? Matthew and Tony. But I'm gonna tell you one thing about the ride home. We got, we tried to get bamboo. Oh, this is the ugly. Hoodwinked, led astray. I have to go and dive in just to get my anchor loose and manually get it out from under him just so that I can move it up and lean. What's up guys? Welcome back to Sailing GBU. Today is a very exciting day. We are finally leaving Puerto Rico. It has been many years in the making. When we first came to Puerto Rico, we were so excited and we thought we were just gonna visit the island and then go on our way. All right guys, we made it. We crossed the Mona Passage and we made it to Puerto Rico. Back in Puerto <laughs> Rico, and you know it's sailing good, bad, and ugly style. I had to pop my Four dollar bottle of that JP Chanel <laughs> Champizzle that I got from the DR. So, but then things in life started turning. We had to redo the bottom of our boat, fix a lot of things there. Then we planned on going sailing, but then our engine finally was donezo. So then we said, you know what, we're gonna do a whole refit. And a couple years went by, right? Two, three. Well, the island the was true to its name. It's called the. Isla de Encanto, the enchanting island, and we were enchanted. We fell in love and we decided to stay and keep building our boat and I'll forever be indebted to Puerto Rico for helping me build my boat and improve it so much and adding wealth to my life. But to every season, turn, 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 and we're leaving off to go on our big grand adventure. So this is our big adventure that we planned for 2023. We are leaving and we are going southeast and our first stop is St. Thomas and I cannot wait! Are you excited? I can wait. Why? I want to move back to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Get out of here. I love Puerto Rico too, but we're off. There's so many adventures to be had. So we also have Pops with us. So that's another fun adventure. So we are going to head off today. Here we go. Oh, and we might go fishing and we might catch tunas and mahis. We don't know. This world is really open for us. All right, guys. So I decided to get my workout in today. I know a lot of you guys don't like me lifting up this heavy motor on the back, but I had to do it because we're going a little bit further today, about 18 miles across open water. And even though the weather's been calm, I wanted to be safety first and give my old dinghy. An easy ride this time, an easy break, and then also when I get to the new place, I'll have the motor off so I'll be able to clean the bottom of the dinghy a lot easier and everything will go beautifully. A lot of y'all got my cheeks last week because on my channel I said- A couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, excuse me. It was uh, pulling the anchor is okay. I said, general rule, if you're under 50 and your boat's under 40 feet, you don't really need a windlass to pull the anchor. And a lot of 67 year olds that are very athletic came for me in the comments. They said, boy, I'm 95. I still surf 15 foot waves. I don't care what nobody tells you. I'll beat the dogs out of you, boy. And I don't remember saying in the video that if you're 73, you can't pull an anchor because you're old and feeble. I don't think I said anything like that. What I said was if your boat is small and you're younger, you definitely don't need a windlass. That's all I said. So today in the spirit of that, I'm gonna make my 65 year old dad go up there and pull the anchor. I'm gonna be on the engine here communicating with him and I think he's gonna be able to do it just fine. So you tell me what you need, left, right, forward, backwards, slower, faster, and I'll do it for you. Left, right, slower, faster. But all you gotta tell me. Let both of them, so that's the sequence? No. Wait, what's your name to be pulling though? Are you Albert Anchor Puller? Albie? I'm gonna call you Albie. That's a good name for you, I think. Albie. Like Albie. Alby the anchor boy. Oh. Oh shoot! Ooh. Already starting to turn. Ooh. 
Alright, we got one injury, but the journey is going to continue. We're heading off now. Bye, beautiful Kula Brita. Can't wait to come back one day in the future, but we are off. All right, Dad, when we're fishing out there, only got one rule and one rule only. Do not hook the dinghy. So if I do hook it, we'll just reel it in, get a picture, and weigh it, and see how long it is. Jokes. We had the fishing lines down and we are going to a known spot where people are known to catch mahis and I'm hoping for a tuna but I feel pretty good knowing that this is a known spot and we're not just putting the line down hoping for the best so wish us luck Alright guys, so we went around those rocky outcrops. I've had success there before with some mahi and small tuna. We did not get a bite, but we will be trolling down like the whole 160 foot line for the next 12 miles all the way to St. Thomas. So we're still holding out hope that we might get on something. Because we got the good vibes, right? It's all yeah, about the good, good vibes. vibes. If you have the good vibes, the fish will come. So we're about halfway there, but there is a lot of storms coming up. A lot of dark clouds. You can't see them behind me because they're in front of us. I hope we don't get too wet. I hope it doesn't get too crazy. We are still motoring because we're trying to catch the fish, but we will see. the biggest closest brightest rainbow I've ever seen guys it's so bright that I screamed out loud you can ask them right Matt she did she said oh god the bright rainbow I was like so awesome you don't see that many rainbows when you live on land as you do on a boat but that one was thick and it was bright St. Thomas. Awesome. 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 All right, boys and girls. So it's first thing in the morning, early here at the crack of dawn, and we came out here to clean the dinghy. I can't imagine a more beautiful place to do it. We just got a little bit of scrape on the bottom left over from our trip home. So let's get into it. Let's face the day bravely and 
get our work done. Right, guys we are now heading in obviously our squeaky steps is Matt going out the door we are now heading in to town because we have been really sucking on provisioning for three people me and Matt are not used to having a third person on the boat and we thought we did good but we really didn't I think I don't know maybe Matt's dad eats more than we planned on and we ran out of eggs we some reason didn't buy more than 12 eggs so we're gonna get it together we're heading to the store hopefully the prices aren't too high it's been a while since we were in St. Thomas and I'm kind of nervous to see how much food's gonna be today but let's go in let's get to the store it's gonna be an adventure insist upon rowing today because he didn't want to put the motor on so we're out here getting a nice ride by Matthew today. What the heck are those guys? Red fire ants or some kind of red bugs. I've never seen those before and they look dangerous. Hopefully Matt doesn't stick his finger into it this time. <sighs> Matthew, stop, ew, oh gosh. bus has arrived. It's time to get on. I think this is our bus. Five stars, 10 out of 10 recommend. It was fun, we saw some sights, we got on, we got off, and now we're only a small walk to the grocery store. All right y'all, so the bus was still cheap. I was hyped about that. The bus was still only a dollar, two bucks maybe. And, uh, but the cat food, we're getting there some wet food and the cat food is like Double. two plus dollars for a serving. And I'm like, oh Lord, I love bear, but I don't know if I love her that much. Yeah, right. We do love her.
made it back to the boat and we're gonna lay down the GBU of so far our St. Thomas going to the grocery store. Now, as we all know, the prices have gone up on food all around the world for the most part. And I thought I was starting to feel it in Puerto Rico and we went to Culebra instead of the mainland. Else I probably would have provisioned more, but coming back, we before we left, we went to Culebra, which is already pretty expensive. So I said, you know what, let's just see how St. Thomas prices are. Well, that was wrong. It, Boy. it went up. I don't want to say double, but it went up a lot. I Some things are still okay priced though, so you really have to watch out what you're getting. I did, a couple things I did spend too much money on was probably four sticks of butter. I paid about $12. What else? The olive oil was a lot, but I needed it. Yeah, a whole chicken was $21 for like a two pound chicken. I'm trying to get my mindset around how much it's gonna be going down the islands, but you know, we're committed, so. Yeah, we're never going back. So that was the bad and the ugly. What was the good? Just that we got stuff? They do have a lot of things. Oh, and the good was, yeah. The good was they had a lot of stuff though. And here's some few things that I was excited about getting. I'm trying this new hard seltzer. Let me know if you guys ever tried it. It's called Soka. Is that what that says? Soka and it's ginger lime so this is going to be a cool treat hopefully it's good it's in collaboration with the leatherback brewing so save the turtles we'll try that i don't know if leatherback brewing does do anything to save the turtles but i guarantee they say they do something to save the turtles so we gotta at least just believe them on that we got we're trying this for the first time virgin islands saint by the saint john brewers it's island summer ale don't know how that's gonna be, but I'm excited to try this. And one thing that we got last time we were here that I'm excited that I had to get, even though it's expensive, it's like three or four dollars a bottle. So is... wait, we already got it on this channel? I've gotten this so last we... time. So we on reruns. This is good, we it's good. Reruns. You gotta get it when you come here. St. John Brewer's root beer. This is just regular root beer. It's really good and it's like three or four dollars a bottle, but. So yeah, Chris is excited for the treats, but I'm gonna tell you one thing about the ride home. We got, we tried to get bamboo. Oh, this is the ugly. Hoodwinked, led astray. So they have a safari taxi here that's like a dollar per person. It takes you all through town. It stops a million times. That's probably why it's a dollar. So we're coming back. We're at the bus stop. 15 buses go by. I'm like, man, this is crazy. So the safari bus truck And I looks, bought ice cream. Yeah, ice cream's melting. The clock's ticking. You know, we were at the bus stop for about 20 minutes. So this guy pulls over. He's like, all right, six bucks each. And I'm like, oh, fine, whatever. But you're gonna take us all the way to the beach, right? Now at the bus stop, he says, yeah, whatever, I'll take you to the beach. So we go over, we get all the way to the beach, and then he, I hand him the 20. He starts dealing with some other customers, he turns around to me, he says, hey, you waiting for change? And I say, you got damn right I'm waiting for my change. Yeah, he didn't want to give us And he change. said, no, no, he said, and I said, yeah, you told me it was $6 each, so it's $18 for the three of us. Let me get my $2. And he said, you had a lot of luggage with you. The luggage is $9 a bag. I said, you ain't help me with my luggage. So you gonna give it up? And he coughed up that two dollars. I would. It was. It was gonna be on. There's a little bit of a hustler mentality out here, but at the end of the day, we got our groceries, and now we're back home. It was pricey, but we got stuff. Do do tell. Them. All right, y'all. So I just checked the weather, and I'm thinking about moving anchorages, even though this is one of the most beautiful favorite anchorages of mine to just rest for a couple days and make bread and take in make bread make some bread take in the serenity of saint thomas since it can be a little hustly and bustly and crowded here this is one of the few places that you can just woosa but my dad said there are no young ladies around here i need some nightlife hoss my dad's the original e-freak so he's used to being in the big cité, and he said we got to go out and find some gals shaking their tail feathers so old old mac daddy you know it's the return of the mac we're getting some nightlife hopefully we're gonna move over friday closer to town. it's friday so dad said he's gonna go holler and i'm i'm willing to just kick back have a painkiller and watch my dog crash and burn you how about you <laughs> yeah sounds like a good time I hope some girls flirt back with him because then he'll get shy and I can really bust his balls. All right, so dad's going to go pull the anchor for me once again. And the old man. And I'm not going to have the headsets on, so we're doing this one old school. Hand signals, bro. Matthew and Tony together. <laughs> Save that one for later.
All right, guys, so we anchored where, by Hassel Island where we were in a previous video. If you're an old follower, you know that- Reruns. We, we sailed here with no engine before and we almost crashed into those rocks over there, but we got an engine now. We safely got here and we're going out now. Hopefully Matt's dad can pick up some ladies since he's been talking about it this whole trip. And we're gonna go out and get some cheeseburgers or something i don't know i'm pretty hungry so we might get some hamburgers we might get some tuna i don't know but after today's grocery shopping i think you guys are stuck to just you know carrots and celery i haven't even eaten all day i <laughs> sailed us over here i rode us to shore multiple times I celery the dinghy and carrots. Anchor. i'm gonna need more protein than that i'm gonna need at least my five shillings all right let's go guys i carried a lot of groceries today also he didn't do it all by no means k10 carried a lot oh you guys don't know where it's k10 but i do carried a lot of groceries so he by no means did it all although he did do a lot kind are, of you, are you guys arguing are we having trouble in paradise oh no absolutely not the only thing i'll tell everyone out there in youtube land is don't have kids <laughs> they're not worth it they're not worth it trust me to tell you to cheers me, but here we go. Happy Friday the 13th, GBU Nation. Ooh, that's strong. How's yours? What'd you get? What is this? Orange juice. This orange juice? Yeah. It's good for you. All right, guys, we finished dinner, and now we're leaving. How was it? How was the live music? He didn't pick up any women. He didn't even talk to any of them. I feel like he talked to more dogs on the floor than he did yeah you're women. pretty brave when it comes to petting them dogs but when it came to getting them ladies <laughs> they love me all the ladies were just a little bit elder than i like them but oh my god don't listen to him they were a little too married probably also <laughs> maybe but yeah it was and cool. out of your league we no. got to meet some homies no they definitely weren't shout out to the homies barefoot cowboy i think it's i think it was barefoot cowboy i'm pretty sure i got like brain damage so forgive me if that wasn't it but they got a, a big Tourist charter. charter boat, so they're out here running around doing their thing. St. Thomas, check them out. I was thinking out. I might start a charter business, so y'all let me know if I need to start a charter because you know now that I got a deckhand, you know we 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 got a cabin boy, so we can. <laughs> cabin make it happen. boy's going the, overboard. The, the deckhand is never going to work for him. Oh, 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 okay. No Christmas bonus for you. All right, y'all. So I had a rough night last night. I didn't get no sleep. A small blow came. Uh, through nothing crazy 30 knot whatever some gusts coming through but my boy in front of me he not our boy not our boy just someone that anchors and there's a couple of catamarans out here that are anchored up that have like 12 to 1 10 to 1 12 to 1 scope out uh this guy has like he said 120 feet i think he's got 150 feet of chain out um i had to dive it last night at like one in the morning because when the wind switched I have about 70 feet of chain out, which I think is adequate for 12 feet deep water. And uh, when we turned, the guy was like 15 feet off my bow and he was kind of like wondering about things. So I got out and I let out more chain. I checked his anchor in the middle of the night and his one of his anchors had flipped over. So maybe that's what led him back up so much. But it's a pretty crazy amount of chain. So now he's got so much out that he's actually over, completely over my chain. The front of his boat is, is over my chain. So I have to go in there. Your anchor. Excuse me, my anchor. I have to go and dive in just to get my anchor loose and manually get it out from under him just so that I can move it up and leave and get somewhere a little bit less uh, less crowded. But yeah, it's wild. So let me know in the comments below what's an acceptable amount of scope out. This anchorage here from one set of rocks to one set of rocks is about 800 feet wide. Uh, and buddy got to have 150 feet of chain out. And he didn't care when we told him his anchor was flipped. Yeah, his anchor was flipped. He's just like, oh yeah, it's crazy. That's wild. Whatever. So that's uh, 
That's St. Thomas for you. Pretty wild spot. <laughs> All right, so I went, I got all the anchors sorted out. I had to go under homeboy's boat to get mine. Really nice guy. He just uh, likes his scope. Can't blame him for that. Those, you know, 40 foot plus catamarans have a lot more windage, a lot more freeboard, I think it's called, superstructure. There's a lot more of that boat out of the water, so the wind affects it a lot differently. I'd want a lot of scope if it was my boat too. So I did what was right for me, and I just got the heck up out of there. That, in my opinion, it was too much scope, no matter how nice the guy is, how cool he was. Um, but he did, he did say, he's like, I'll just take some chain up. I'll move. You know, you don't have to move. He was super accommodating, but I was like, nah, bro, don't worry about it. I like to be far away because realistically, I like to put a lot of scope out too. So now I'm all by myself in the rolly part and I got all the scope out and I'm living the dream. I swam under his boat and I actually had a look and his anchor was like right at the back of the boat in front of him and was completely all the way over my anchor. And then I only had about... 30 feet behind me till I would have been in the rock. So I just got the heck out of yeah, there. Yeah, they got a little bit of a mess over there. It's, it's a lot of boats. Yeah, there's some sunken boats. There's some small spot. There's some boats that I only saw a guy come out and check it. You know, that's a spot where, that's a, you know, for the most part, there's plenty of some days over there. There's like someday I'll, I'll deal with this boat and they just keep sinking right there until they, until they get done. But either way, really cool guy, nice guy. We got our stuff settled and I'm a lot happier and I'm going to get some sleep tonight because I was up all night last night that but was a we long just night. we're gonna have to get used to it being a lot more crowded in the anchorages so yeah. we're learning we're getting used to it you can't control what other people are doing all you can control is your own boat and your own situation there is no right or wrong in sailing there is only survival <laughs> i don't know what that went okay <clears throat> anyways really exciting news people we came out with a new t-shirt design and matt came up with this design and we had someone make it for us and tell them about your design well you guys asked for it and you ask and you shall receive um we made a dead dolphin t-shirt i had an image in my head that i was like we can make it like a zombie type dolphin risen from the dead and this the the dorsal fin can be like a torn up old mainsail like our mainsail used to be all tore up and then, you know, just nautical theme. I kind of went with like a Grateful Dead sort of style is what I kind of wanted to do. And um, I think it came out really cool. I can't wait to get one. It'll be a while for me. But if you want to get one, snatch one up. Cause... Check it out. They're live right now. We do have, there's different kinds of t-shirts. Our prices for all of our t-shirts, not just the Dead Dolphin, they go all up and down. And you really got to read through what kind of shirt you're picking out. We made sure that we can do a lot of different prices so everyone can find something that they want to pay for. And some shirts are thinner material, some are slim fit, some can go up all the way to 4X, some don't. So yeah, hopefully, them, there's some, boys. hopefully there's something for everyone. We try, we're not just into our t-shirts just to make as much money as possible. We want everyone to be able to 
you know, rise up and wear. Yeah, I want you. To, I want you to get made fun of when you wear a T-shirt that says "Dead Dolphin" on it. If you got the cojones <laughs> to go along with it, so it'll definitely be a, a conversation starter. But we're doing that, and you know, I think it came out really cool. I'm hyped for it. So thanks for watching, guys. We are actually going on our way right now. We are going to land to pretty much I'm gonna I finish editing my video so I'm gonna celebrate I'm gonna drink some bushwhackers I'm gonna probably get some tuna tacos I'm gonna stuff my face and go into town maybe buy some souvenirs you know tourist stuff and we'll be filming that for our patreon so if anyone's interested in seeing just it's just gonna be short little fun extra bonus content if you want to see that make sure you sign up on our patreon and that's about it for us today or this week. So Yeah, and I'm going to buy a souvenir for my mom, but I'm going to send it back with my dad. So they're going to have to meet up and maybe maybe they'll get back together, guys. <laughs> Some good vibes. <laughs> Marriage number three. You know, Pop said ain't going to happen, but, you know, he he liked to talk that Marriage game. Marriage number three. They got a lot of love still, I think. So, you know, as a kid from divorced parents, you always hope they get back together. And I'm 37 years old. I'm not giving up hope. I'm going to buy like a snow globe from St. Thomas and mom and daddy going to be K-I-S-S-I-N-G. <laughs> get out of here. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.